the weaponization of disingenuous claims of racism. And I, I wanted to start with um, a case study a little bit on this anti-Semitism stuff of your boy RFK Jr. Because the narrative on him in the press has flipped completely over the last like, you know, six weeks uh, as he comes out, you know, in in brazen defense of uh, the Israeli government, uh, you know, with, and and we're going to start here with with this clip of him uh, in crystal ball. But I, I just wanted to say that what's funny about these claims that are being made of anti-Semitism is there's no evidence behind any of them. And I'll show you an example of this in a minute. But the the craziest part of all of this is th these claims are so vague. They're just like, oh, well, Jewish students don't feel safe on college campuses because people and, – and they say that people are calling for their genocide. And at no point in any of this dialogue does anyone go, hey, uh, give me a specific example of where this happened. And when they do, it's it's something that's so vague. You're like, wait a minute, because they said from the river to the sea, that's what you're defining as calling for their genocide. Um, you're fucking ridiculous. I'm sorry. And and they could get laughed out of the debate um, in that way. But anyway, let's let's go into the weeds a little bit. Let's start here with this clip of um, RFK Jr. defending Zionism. Crystal ball. Go in there and put IDF soldiers at risk in hand-to-hand -hand combat. This is Hamas's, you know, like Hamas has made this stand. They're putting civilians in the way. What is Israel supposed to do? We can't leave Hamas in there. But Bobby, I don't think we should accept that from any state, Israel well, I, or any uh, other. And I mean, they they have rendered. So would, would you, oh, no, 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 no. They've yeah. rendered Gaza City uninhabitable at this point. And there's been reports documenting that some of the procedures that you're talking about that they used in previous wars, they're not using this time. They've emphasized this oh, attack on quote unquote power targets, which are things like civilian infrastructure and high rise apartments buildings, not to get Hamas, but to create a quote shock in the civilian population. In addition, as I mentioned before, you have a collective punishment of 2.2 million people who are having their access to water, food, fuel, medicine blocked right now by Israel. Um, this also appears to be in violation of the Geneva Conventions. You know, do you think that it's acceptable to impose a siege on the entire civilian population in Gaza? If there's a violation, first of all, I don't think that's happening. I don't think that's happening. Let me explain. Second of all, if it violates the Geneva Convention or if they're deliberately, any, at any point, anybody is deliberately targeting civilians, they should be prosecuted and they should be jailed and the key should be thrown away. Mm. But I, you know, people say this. Should be. But, you know, I don't see any proof of that. You we right now, we, that people are deliberately, uh, deliberately targeting civilians. The, but the so. government announced they were doing a complete siege on the 2.2 million. Yeah, OK, population. you're talking about the, you know, the, the siege. The, set, yeah, the, the, the siege. Oh, OK, now. yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing where. Siege warfare is what Saudi Arabia was doing in Yemen, by the way, that everyone was upset about. Even Bernie Sanders came out against that. They said that they were turning off the fuel and the water <laughs> and the electricity. I mean, again, this is just what this guy does. It's like, oh, well, they're not doing that. Well, yeah, they are doing that. Oh, well, you're talking about that other thing that they do. Well, yeah, I guess a siege, right? And I, I lifted this clip from due distance because Keaton and Russell break it down amazingly. But I want you to see what happens when RFK, the reason I pulled this clip is, is I want you to see what happens when RFK gets pushed to the point where he can't, he doesn't have a valid argument to come back with. We did for, for 10 years, we did collective punishment of Iraq. We actually I'm killed. I'm not trying to justify yeah. that either here. Yeah, but why are we just going after the Jews? Why, no, no, why no, no, they, they, they all give up Israel. the game. They all, give, they all give up the game. All of them, eventually, if you push these Zionists hard enough, they will concede that Israel is a settler colonial project committing atrocities by deflecting to other settler colonial projects that committed atrocities. Yeah. Like you're giving away the whole game. If you're making that comparison, you are now conceding what Israel actually is. Of course. A hundred percent. Why are you, why are you singling out the Jews? Point. First of all, that's such a great point. That, that that when you use that comparison, you're giving away the. I, I, RFK is not Jewish. I am. Don't you don't put this on me. Do not put this on us. Okay, you do right. not speak for the Jews. Right. It's just another sleazy tactic. Yeah. You're only blaming the Jews when they do it. No. Uh, you're uh, look, I don't the know. Uh, look, I, I. What is he saying? It's racism. 
it's that Robert Kennedy is using the it's you're a racist claim to defend this stuff. I don't know what Crystal's politics were back in 2003. I don't know if she was on the air at that point. I don't think she was. I certainly was very much against the Iraq war. I was 16 years old at the time. You're not talking to a bunch of morons who were cheerleaders for the Iraq war. When you start saying, well, I mean, we laid siege upon Baghdad. And so why are you giving the Jews a problem for laying siege upon Gaza? At that point, you've lost. You've right. lost. And he reverts right. to that quite a few times. Uh, we, let, let me just no, say because right our now. tax dollars are going to fund what's going on and the uh, the visuals of these children being killed and losing their parents and the rubble and you know the total destruction this is something our god is bad i have friends in, have i have friends in gaza <laughs> okay i have a he has friends in gaza of course of course so this was the headline on rfk junior just a couple months ago this guy who is blindly like look at this here let me show you this real quick RF Kennedy Jr. airs bigoted new COVID conspiracy theory about the Jews and the Chinese. He's a racist. It is absolutely wild how he's calling people racist now in defense of, of Israel. <laughs> when not even like six weeks ago, Debbie Wasserman Schultz went to Congress and called him an anti-Semite. That's how disingenuous these freaking claims are. So I want to show you real quick, too. This is a PBS uh, piece on RFK Jr. around the same time. And this is just, I mean, PBS is government you know, news, but just let's enjoy this. The intense this focus brilliant. on the Republican primary this election season, one Democratic underdog has been getting attention for his controversial comments, spreading misinformation on a range of topics. That was on display again today as Robert F. Kennedy Jr. testified on Capitol. I was just thinking it, it might be a good drinking game to like watch CNN or MSNBC and every time they say misinformation, disinformation, or malinformation, or like Russian propaganda or anything like that, you have to drink, you would be so wasted within like an hour. It would be unbelievable. Hill at a hearing convened by House Republicans. Lisa Desjardins explores what has captured the attention of some voters. Thank you all very much. The first major 2024 surprise, Democrat Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has sparked double digit support in polls controversy on airwaves, and a headache for President Joe Biden. This spring, the 69-year-old environmental lawyer launched his campaign, highlighting his famous political family. 69? Is he really 69 years old? Of wow. Kennedy for President signs. I've come here today to announce my candidacy for the Democratic nomination for President of the United States. The echo of the past, impossible to miss. I am announcing today my candidacy for the presidency of the United States. The son of Senator Robert F. Kennedy, who was assassinated months after launching his campaign for president, and nephew of John F. Kennedy, killed while president. My father and my uncle had a vision for America. On one hand, this Kennedy leans into his family's legacy. On one hand, views that are anti-war, pro-environment, and talk of ending divide. The possibility they foresaw the is setup. still alive. We're trying to be fair here. On one hand, was, and yet. Maybe it's time to unlearn the reflexes of fear and blame and find ways to unify ourselves and turn our country around. But on the other hand, Kennedy stokes his own controversy, conspiracy, and at times racial confrontation. As in the He's latest headlines, the New York Post obtained video of Kennedy at a dinner with reporters saying the coronavirus targets specific racial groups. COVID-19 is targeted to attack uh, Caucasians and uh, and uh, and uh, okay. black people. Let me people watch, watch this video. This guy behind him is one hundred percent the guy that set this up. Just look at the guy's face. Like he, he, that's the guy that set up the camera and was like, "Hey, Robert, why don't you talk about your theory that you this study that you read about um, how uh, COVID was engineered specifically?" We're most immune are Ashkenazi Jews. And, uh, and Chinese. Outcry was immediate. The head of the Anti-Defamation League wrote that the idea feeds into conspiracy theories. 
the Anti-Defamation League. Did I hear the Anti-Defamation League? Did someone say the Anti-Defamation League? ADL is played out. Nobody knows who the ADL are. Stop giving them attention. Nobody cares about the ADL. Thanks, Kanye. Lacks any factual basis and is nuts. The Jewish group has put out research in the past debunking racist COVID theories as dangerous. Kennedy tweeted out that his words were misconstrued, yet doubled down on the idea of ethnic targeting. Oh. He linked to a study. But that study does not say any group is targeted by or immune from COVID. Instead, it focused on some cell traits that might make things easier or harder for the virus. That study was early in the pandemic. It is so I love how they debunk that, too. None of what they said there discredits anything he said. They, the way that they worded that was suspicious. And then they go, but that was also early in the pandemic. That was before we knew what we know now, which is that everything was safe and effective and great. And let's keep moving and think about Ukraine war now. It is now clear, of course, that COVID hit brutally across brutally, ethnic populations. Absolutely. At Kennedy's fiery hearing on Capitol Hill today, Democrats blasted him. Your bizarre, unproven claim echoes that same historic slander of labeling Jews and Chinese people as a race, and that Jews and in this case, he's a racist. Of course, he's a racist. We all knew that was coming. Chinese people somehow managed to avoid a deadly illness that targets other groups for death. You do see that, yes or no? You're misstating. No, 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 no. Uh, you I are. quoted. I quoted what you said earlier. You belongs. are slandering me Time incorrectly. To the, time belongs You're to You're saying is dishonest. Time belongs to the gentle lady from Florida. I defend myself. When presented with many of his past statements, Kennedy told lawmakers he is misunderstood. My views are constantly misrepresented. I believe vaccines should be tested with the same rigor as other medicines and medications. But Kennedy has pushed a host of disproven ideas that undermine all vaccines. Yes, yes. And he's a racist. And so you see how absolutely disingenuous this is, because today, RFK Jr. today is using the same tactics that Debbie Wasserman Schultz was using on him six weeks ago, calling anyone who questions what they're saying, a racist. And it gets better. So I happen to be watching Joe Rogan and, you know, they do this thing called uh, protect our parks, which is great. It's just him and Shane Gillis and Ari and uh, Mark Norman. And they all get drunk and smoke cigars and talk trash and just talk about stuff. Um, but they started talking. The first thing they go into is this bit about how the uh, presidents of major educational institutions are condoning genocide. And, you know, I'm sure that they're, it's because they're racists. Uh, there's, it's not any more nuanced than that, but just watch a little bit of this. Weird, wacky, deep holiday. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have enough candles missing? Yeah, we have the right amount. There you go. Damn. Adolf. Are we going to get in trouble with the president of Harvard for letting us? <laughs> <laughs> Just say genocide is bad. Yeah, I can't is, do it. I can't. Come it's, on. It's so good sometimes. Did she get busted for plagiarizing today? No. Who did? The president of Harvard. What was she plagiarizing? For saying genocide is, is right. My no, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> Hitler said that. She plagiarized. No, obviously they're joking. They're joking around her dissertation oh really oh yeah. shit harvard's got some great talent out there yikes well yeah. she's gone now right i think they've fired her. i don't think so i oh. think some of them are gone and some of them aren't what is the what's the latest on those three ladies we no, should play that video again, i like i know that these guys are drinking and they're joking but it's like they're a little bit um not uh, like they lack self-awareness in that I'm sure there's footage, and I didn't go dig it up, of these guys going like, isn't it terrible that so-and-so got, um, you know, slandered for misgendering someone or something like that, you know, and it, it, let's keep going, because they redeemed no, themselves. Because the video is fucking It's insane. wild. The congressman is like, I, what? What? Yeah. It's insane. <laughs> you got to get those three. The congresswoman, right? Get them on here. Woman, yeah. Yeah, yeah, great get them on. Yeah. You can conduct genocide, or you can't conduct. You got to get them in there like, what's, what's your favorite genocide? 
These guys are suddenly pro Karen. <laughs> Rank your top six genocides. Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> Spanish Inquisition was a good one. Does that count? Is that a gen? Gen yeah, Z. I'm gonna send this to you, Jamie. I guess it does. Yeah, Spanish Here we Inquisition. Go. Yeah, Let's cheers. Go. Bottoms cheers, up. cheers. I forgot the eggnog. I haven't. I haven't even seen that video yet. Of those ladies. Cheers, what? gentlemen. I haven't seen it. Oh, you haven't I seen the video. Off to it. The video is going to drive me nuts. It's pretty wild. I'm telling you, this uh, Hamas is poking a hole in everything. It's all good, except for the dead people. Okay, but if you want to get, if you want to get really crazy about this, <laughs> yeah. while I'm wearing this fucking Off to mustache a hot start. And glasses, <laughs> oh, yeah. do you, do you <laughs> ever kill wonder, Bill? Yeah. <laughs> how much time do you guys ever wonder about whether or not there's foreign influence in the way uh, things are like discussed on college campuses? Much less. What do you mean? So Joe Rogan goes into this conspiracy theory after this about like China and Russia, like buying off the, the educational boards, completely ignoring what the Israel lobby is doing right now, we disingenuously weaponizing racism and taking money away to influence in these, these institutions. Like it's literally right in front of his face. And he completely ignores that aspect of it, which I, 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 I adopt points from, but they do, it does get better. And they do give a little more nuance. I mean, these guys are already talking way more nuance than the actual, you know, mainstream press. And they're a bunch of drunks on a podcast. But let's keep watching. Intellectual peak in terms of the way we view really the world. Listen to what she's saying. Put the headphones on, boys. Fuck. We can always put the ears back. Side of Jews <laughs> violate Penn's rules or code of conduct. Yes or no? If the speech turns into conduct, it can be harassed. Why is she smiling? I am asking, yeah. specifically calling for the genocide of Jews. Does that constitute bullying or harassment? <laughs> so uh, this is the thing I think sucks about this, because this lady did not answer this question in the smartest way. And it made her look stupid, to be honest, because the answer to this is, of course, of course. That's harassment. Of course it is. But what's give me an example of where that has happened. And when you get into what the examples are, that's when it becomes laughable that that this that college campuses are somehow unsafe for Jewish people. It's that's a fucking ridiculous claim. Jewish people are completely safe here. And if there's proof that people are making anti-Semitic threats, of course, like the guy who shot up that synagogue a while back. There was plenty of documentation. This guy had a manifesto. There was proof that he was a real anti-Semite, you know, and those kind of people, of course, go after them. Let them post on social media. This is the thing that drives me so insane about the, the need to protect us from hate speech on social media is that if people are going to say shit that's violent, you have a record of it on social media. You can use that in court. Let them fucking say it. Let them incriminate themselves. Free speech is not freedom from consequences, guys. Come on. Anyway, this gets a little bit stupid, but they do redeem themselves. If it is directed and severe or pervasive, it is harassment. So the See, answer is yes. Her her answer is is like dodgy, and she should say yes, of course it is, but we have to deal with this on a case-by-case -case basis because there are disingenuous claims of anti-Semitism being used as a weapon. It is a context-dependent decision, Congresswoman. It's a context-dependent decision. It is a context-dependent decision. That's your decision. today, calling for the genocide of Jews is depending upon the context? No, Karen. The context is important, though. If you're going to say that guy was being an anti-Semite, what was he doing? Well, he was saying from the river to the sea. Well, that's up for fucking debate whether or not that's anti-Semitic. So that is not a... a, a legitimate claim of anti-semitism and that's kind of what this lady is saying in a roundabout way but she's not she should she should have started with yes of course that's harassment calling for genocide is harassment but how do you define calling for genocide because if you say from the river to the sea is calling for genocide you're a fucking moron but if someone's legitimately saying hey jewish people i'm coming for you like that is you know prosecutable that is evidence and none of these claims have any evidence. And people that completely is com that point is completely goes over people's heads. No one's paying any attention to that. 
It's just this like vague debate like this. That is not bullying or harassment. This correct. is the easiest question to answer. Yes, Miss McGill. It is. Is she a yeah. Jew? I don't know. Uh, she seems like, it seems like a good Catholic. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Because what these fuckers want is outrage porn. And, and, and Joe and these guys kind of fell for this, obviously. They want to be able to go on TV and go, look at the anti-Semitism of these people. Oh, my God. Send me money. I exposed anti-Semitism in colleges. That's exactly what, why this lady's doing it, you know? And she caught this lady into kind of like, in, she got this lady into in, trapped in a verbal corner where, you know, she's being stupid and she should have just said, yes, of course that's harassment, but we're going to deal with this on a case by case basis and say, okay, what did this person do? What did this person say? How did this, this situation come about? You can't just be judge and jury and executioner at a vague level like this. If it uh, is, if the yes speech or no. becomes Why is she smiling? Conduct Weird. can be harassment. Yes. Oh. And these guys run, run in all these right wing circles where they're like, this president of Harvard is a secret plant by the secular left to take over everything. And dark, but dark, dark, dark. So they have their own level of stupidity surrounding them that, you know, they like to point at liberals as being stupid. And there's a lot of stupidity in the shit lib world, too. But th there's equally and even massively stupider things going on in the conspiracy laden right, like this kind of shit, like oh, the secular left and Russia's infiltrated the colleges. Dark, dark. She's getting worked up. That's the, the best. Speech is not harassment. This is unacceptable. You must love this as a, as a Jewish man. For Look at the this. World to see your answer. Does see, and the thing that never gets talked about, and I'm sorry I keep interrupting, but this is, pisses me off, is is the, the harassment is prosecutable. If there's document like on, you know, whether it's at a protest, whether it's, you know, on social media, if, if someone's saying, you know, violent things to someone on social media, you have proof of that and you can prosecute that. Harassment is a prosecutable thing. Speech is not. Simply saying something that and and the reason that these people are pushing for this besides this lady trying to fundraise off outrage porn in congress is is to tamp down dissidents it's the same reason that they that everyone at january 6 was a white nationalist insurrectionist everyone who criticizes israel is a fucking anti-semite and they're they're and it's and they they even got the whole same op thing going with the date October seventh, January sixth, October seventh, January sixth, January sixth is a day that was worse than Pearl Pearl Harbor. October seventh was the better worse than the Holocaust. Ah, it's fucking hysteria. Calling for the genocide of Jews violate Penn's code of yes. conduct when it comes you to bullying say and yes, harassment. Of course. Yes, Calling for no? the genocide of any race would violate the code of conduct. Let's see some evidence of this, lady. It's an easy answer. It can she's, be harassment. The smiling. answer is yes. And Weird. Dr. Gay <laughs> at Harvard. Dr. <laughs> 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 was this South Park? <laughs> 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 See, that's that's a laugh. The Dr. Gay thing. So, I mean, this is the level of, you know, they're they're obviously playing a little bit as comedians. So I don't want to I'm probably taking this more serious than I should. But <laughs> this is an episode so yeah. far. Jesus like, oh, wow. Listen to this. What's the context? Targeted as an individual, targeted as, at an individual. It's so targeted at said. Jewish students, Jewish individuals. Do you understand your testimony is dehumanizing them? Do you want? <laughs> Listen to how dramatic this lady is. Her testimony is dehumanizing Jewish people. And 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 this is the level of language that they, they want to be able to parse and say like, oh, you said this that offended this person, so we had to shut you off. Understand that dehumanization is part of anti-Semitism. And ruin your career. I will ask you one more time. Damn. Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Harvard's rules of bullying and harassment? Yes or no? Anti-Semitic rhetoric. When it and is it anti-Semitic rhetoric? Anti-Semitic rhetoric when it crosses into conduct that amounts to bullying, harassment. Wow, they can't do it. That is actionable. Rhetoric this is player. just ladies versus ladies arguments. No one's going so, anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> They're locked in. Dude. I've had a tough morning too. We need Herb Dean to stand them back up. <laughs> this is, pause for a second. This is like literally one of the most clear things 
if you would imagine in society. It just See, he's he's right about that, and that's why I'm disappointed with her answer. It's like, yes, of course that's harassment, but unfortunately, a lot of these claims of anti-Semitism can't be taken seriously because the evidence behind them is either completely non-existent or completely laughable when once you scratch the surface. Imagine 10 years ago before any of this woke shit really took off. Yeah. Could you imagine there would ever be a time before the Palestine thing, would there but would ever be a time where you would be in Congress, you would be on television, you would you 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 would be talking to the head of a university, not a wacky student, not some crazy person that's a part of some far <coughs> left like, yeah. psycho organization. The fucking president. And they can't say they, that calling for the genocide of Jews, just Jews, period, is harassment. And again, let's see the evidence. What, who's calling for the genocide of Jews? Because if there's prosecutable en evidence of this happening, of course. It needs to be acted upon, of course. But someone protesting on behalf of Palestine is not calling for the genocide of the Jews. I'm just, I'm sorry. It's just not, unless you're overly emotional and overly sensitive and in your feelings, like a Drake song, and you're a right winger who just blindly supports this kind of stuff. So in this next clip, they actually, and unsurprisingly, it's Shane Gillis who injects a little bit of sense into the debate here but let's let's just watch the clip i don't want to ruin it for you kid Shame he's not doing it. anything so, uh, so here's the video of what they're claiming is is calling for genocide or like you know making or jewish people being unsafe on oh man. He's just this is bag. I can this see is, this is literally someone just trying to walk to class man during hanukkah too <laughs> just shame it says in the, your name, Shane. In the uh, <laughs> caption, <laughs> like, the Shane. guy who tweeted it wrote, it says, no Israeli flag, just a Jew. Tell me it's anti-Zionism and not anti-Semitism. Jewish students in American universities are unsafe. What is Harvard doing to support the freedoms, liberties, and rights of Jewish Yikes. students to merely exist on campus? Okay, I'm trying and to get away. this is uh, Yuval David on Twitter wrote this. This is Jew. insane. It's How insane. did they know he was a Jew? Because I get people think I'm a Jew. So would they, they just no, know. They, they, might be one. That one they is know much. him, maybe. They I know him. That Kid uh, gave like a there's there can't be just they saw a Jewish guy. Who there knows? He, he might have walked by he maybe a gave protest a speech. and said like Israel rules. He picked up a nickel. <laughs> yeah, who knows? So who finally, knows what someone, is, finally, someone goes, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This out of context clip is supposed to be evidence that all Jewish people are unsafe on campus. Really? How did they know that kid was a Jewish guy? So listen, they actually go into the what does it say here? The, uh, the confrontation was triggered when the student attempted to film the demonstrators' faces, leading to his removal from the protest by organizers, according to New York Post. Okay. So they were mad at him because he was trying to find out who was saying all these things, so he's filming their faces. Okay. That, then the question is, okay, what were they saying? Right. So that provides a little context. That guy was out there filming them, probably trying to go report them as, as pro-Palestine anti-semites so they couldn't get jobs or you know ruin their lives in some way and so they surrounded him and, and were being aggressive with him because he was being a dick first but they they will take these out of context clips and throw them up and go like see colleges are unsafe for jewish people it's like if they were calling for death to the jews hey maybe he should fucking be upset at that also, like, yeah, just yeah, to get if they were calling for death to the jews why doesn't that kid have a recording of it he should, right? He was there filming their faces. He's got audio of it. What the hell is going on? Why are people so fucking stupid? There is so much going on in the chaos of these protests. You can pull a clip like this out and make anyone look like a bad guy, you know? And 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 this is the way that these claims, these disingenuous claims of racism get weaponized. And it's funny to me, someone like Joe Rogan doesn't have a uh, perspective here because Here's a clip that you might or might not remember from this year that I had in my vaults. Forcing, forcing Adam Schiff for California Senate. When you read through the way that man lied to the American public through all of Russiagate, you're like, yeah. he should be 
It should crazy. be like in prison for perjury, not being bolstered mm -hmm. by one of the po most powerful women in the country Did for the United States Senate. Sitting next to Ilian Omar, where she's uh, she's apologizing for talking about it's all about the Benjamins. Yeah. Which is just about money. She's, she's talking about she money. She shouldn't have apologized. That I mean, was I'll not, go ahead that's and not say an anti Semitic Ilhan Omar, another example of disingenuous claims of racism. She said it's all about the Benjamins for APAC, so she's anti Semitic. No. APEC controls Congress with money. That's just reality. And these people use these, they weaponize victimization to counter factual things. And this has been going on. I mean, I think the reason it pisses me off so bad is this is what they did to the Sanders supporters. They went, oh, Sanders supporters are misogynistic, anti-women. You know, it's all guys with high testosterone. They just want to beat women and, and support Putin and, you know, whatever you need. <laughs> hey, man, I don't think that is. It's about the Benjamins are money. You know, the, the idea that Jewish people are not into money is ridiculous. Listen. That's like saying <laughs> uh, Italians aren't into pizza. It's fucking I mean, stupid. Listen, it's I, fucking stupid. I understand that. Racist. Like, she could have phrased it a different way so that people would have less of a freak out. But. Can you not talk about the influence of money in D.C.? Of course. When, I mean, this is very obvious. There's a very obvious reason why for my entire life, there's been a uniparty consensus around our policy vis-a-vis -vis the Israeli government and a total there inability or unwillingness to criticize the Israeli government. It has everything to do with organization and, yes, money, yes. just like every other fucking interest in D.C. And so, yeah, the fact that she said that and she got kicked off the Foreign Affairs Committee, look, I have issues and disagreements with Ilhan Omar, but she actually is one of the more courageous voices on foreign policy who's willing to call out some of the hypocrisy and bullshit in U.S. foreign policy. Extremely rare in terms of the United States Congressman. So it, it's actually kind of a real loss that she got kicked off that committee. Yeah, she, whether you agree with her or not, she has a bold opinion, and that opinion is not her own. There's many people that have that opinion, and right. they should be represented. Totally. Yeah. My point is, she's sitting right next to Adam Schiff, and no one says shit. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't say, yeah, yeah, I probably should have said, hey, motherfucker, what did you say? Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, right. You said some crazy shit no. that wasn't true yeah. at all. No, okay. So. So I want to end this segment with what I think is an absolute banger of a summary. And it's from Katie Halper's show. And I, I highly recommend watching this full broadcast she did because it's amazing. But um, these people, uh, specifically this woman, Simone, how this racist, uh, I mean, this claim of racism has been weaponized throughout history by disingenuous people. So listen to this. This is... I think there was... You know, there's, all, of course, all these incredibly disingenuous, uh, you know, people who, who will say just out, outright smear all, all Palestine marches as anti-Semitic. And I, it, it just strikes me as just so, it's so frustrating because I, I think it's fair to say that probably in every single city in which Jews live and there are Palestine marches, there are probably Jews at those marches. No. We are in this movement. We see the freedom for Palestinians as as it's not just like I mean we see the injustices that are happening uh, and and we're outraged on a human level, but also as Jews, we we do feel a responsibility to be in this movement, also for like our own liberation as well. And so um, I think just like the erasure, yeah, of of the diversity of perspectives in our community and. Um, what safety means for us. And and then, uh, yeah, so, and th that's not to just get into the whole other side, which is like, it actually makes it harder to understand real anti-Semitism, right. to take it on, you know, the Anti-Defamation League regularly lumps anti-Israel incidents in with anti-Semitic incidents. How do we even, ha like, how can we even the ADL have is data played out. Nobody knows who the ADL are. Stop the giving them attention. Nobody like, cares about the ADL. The of anti-Semitism, where it's coming from, what it, the phenomenon is, when it's constantly being mixed up with, like, you know, a, a Palestinian student waving a flag on campus or whatever. Right. And it makes it a lot easier for people to dismiss it. I mean, I'm so used to not taking allegations of anti-Semitism seriously because so often they're just... Um, someone criticizing Israel. So it's going to be a lot harder when there are actual incidents of anti-Semitism. And as the film shows, anti-Semitism is not uh, non-existent. In fact, it's dangerous, which is why it needs to be isolated.
there was a guy who shot up a synagogue a couple of years ago. I mean, it's obviously not a non-issue. No one is saying it's a non-issue. From anti-Zionism. But of course, it gets all like di it dilutes and trivializes uh, anti-Semitism when people are presenting it as anti-Zionism. And of course, the other reason that or when people are disingenuously weaponizing it to censor people or s quell protests on a college campus. That I think it's dangerous is because it presents Jews as this monolith who are all loyal to Israel, which is ironically, you know, a very old anti-Semitic trope that you have perpetuated by the ADL and APEC and Israel. Yeah. Um, and, and not only that, I mean, when we're talking about like the foreign relations strategy of the state of Israel, we now see anti-Semitic uh, politicians and right. groups and leaders around the world who like will literally use endorsing the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism, which is the Israeli government's preferred definition that conflates anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism. They will endorse that IRA definition and then they get the Hector from, you know, Bibi Netanyahu. And therefore, you know, they're they're good on anti-Semitism when right. these people, you know, are, can be leaders who uh, engage in Holocaust denial or revisionism, who stoke anti-Semitism and Islamophobia in their own countries. I mean, we see the way that this conflation of anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism is also like a core part of this authoritarian right wing is. movement around the world that uses this false claims of caring about Jewish people as a kind of cover for these broader uh, bigoted movements. I mean, the House hearing with the college presidents was also right. like a textbook example of that, right? That That is a great line. She talks about how an authoritarian right-wing movement is using anti-Semitism to quell dissent. Um, and that's the part I think that Joe Rogan and, and his boys miss 